the lady with the questions and the answers, Valerie Singleton. Hello and welcome to Backgate, the show that helps you remember what happened when, where and why in the last six decades. All of us remember roughly when events happen, but I wonder how accurate we can ever be. Now, this is the show that puts together the days, the months, and the years. So, let's meet the three contestants who are going to play Backdate today. First of all, Vic Cole, who is pump room guide in a museum in Gloucestershire. I was born on the 12th of October, 1937, and share my birth date with newscaster Angela Rippon. Mary Waldron is a part-time lecturer, lives now in Dumfries, but I believe originally comes from County Kerry. Yes, I was born on the 21st of August 1959 and I share my birth date with uh, the tennis player Anne Hobbs. Mike Durham is an administrator who comes from Hayes in Middlesex. Yes, I was born on the 5th of March 1964 and I share my birth date with the day that the Covent Garden Theatre burned down. Will you give a warm welcome please to Vic, Mary and Mike. <laughs> explain that day to you. On our master board we have a selection of different numbers. Now you can win these numbers by answering general knowledge questions and the idea is to turn those numbers into date lines on your grids. And a complete date line of course is a day, a month and a year. You get 10 points for an ordinary answer and you get 30 bonus points if you get a date line question correct. In the first round the computer is scanning the board at random and when you buzz in it stops if you get the answer right you get that particular number if you don't then i will throw it open to the other contestants it's a fairly fast round so here goes which veteran australian dj is nicknamed fluff vic alan freeman yes number 16 day a please which novelist wrote the book oranges are not the only fruit mary uh, janet winterton yes janet winterson is right number nine day a please which veteran American television chat show host was introduced to his audience with the words, here's Johnny, Mike. Johnny Carson. Yes, number eight. Uh, month A, please. What is the first name of the English fashion designer whose surname is Hamlet? Mary. Catherine. Yes, that is right. That gives you 47, Mary. Year A, please. Which film featured the Oscar-winning song, The Windmills of Your Mind? Mary. Uh, Thomas Crown Affair. Yes, very good movie. Number seven, where's that going? Uh, month A, please. And Mary, you have a day prize. Very short time into the game, our first date line for Mary is the 9th of July, 1947. How are you on the 40s, Mary? Um, so so. On the 9th of July, 1947, the announcement of what led to cheering crowds outside Buckingham Palace and the appearance on the palace balcony? Of Princess Elizabeth. Uh, the announcement of her engagement to um, Philip Mountbatten. Yes, that is correct. You have 30 bonus points. <laughs> Mary, that dateline is now frozen. You can't play on it until you've completed another one. Mm -hmm. Which United States agency is part of the Department of Justice and had as its director J. Edgar Hoover, <coughs> Mary? Uh, the FBI. Yes, and he was the director from 1934 to his death in 72. 60. Uh, year B, please. Which Irish singer caused a storm of protest when she tore up a picture of the Pope live on American television? Mary. Uh, Sinead O'Connor. Yes. Number 15, Mary. Day B, please. Which controversial playwright had an early success with a TV drama called Vote, Vote, Vote for Nigel Barton? Mike. Dennis Potter. Yes, Mike. Number 66. Uh, year A, please. Snow Crown and Snow Cap are both varieties of which kind of vegetable? Mike. Celery? No. Anyone else? Vic. Cauliflower? Yes, Vic. That is right. The clue is in the snow. 17. Day B, please. Last question in this round. Which religious leader ordered the mass suicide of the People's Temple cult in Guyana, Mary? Uh, Jones. Jim Jones. The Reverend Jim Jones is right, Mary. Number 29 is yours. Um, uh, day C, please. And that brings us to the end of our first round. Let us look at the scores. Mike and Vic are in second place on 20. Mary, you are in the lead on 90 points. <laughs> now, in this round, I allow you to play a little bit more skillfully, really. I always count the first round rather as like the deck of cards that you get dealt. 
This time you can actually create your own date lines because I allow you to pick a number off the board. And it's our entertainments and quotations round. So, Vic, would you like to begin by naming a number, please? Uh, Eleven. I gather you collect records, Vic. What sort of records are those? Uh, they range from the 50s and 60s, mostly pop music, and uh, it's known as WRCC, the worst record collection in Cheltenham. Ah. I have the records that everybody else doesn't want. Well, I don't know about this one. Let's see if you've got this one in your collection. You're alive, so come on and show it. There's such a lot of living to do. Have you got that one? No. Did you recognise it? Yes. Yes, it was a Sammy Davis Jr. song, of course. Now, along with Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. was renowned as a member of the select group of entertainers who worked and socialised with Frank Sinatra. By what nickname were the group known? The Rat Pack. Yes, of course. They were the original Rat Pack, or the clan. Number 11, where's that going? Month A, please. Mary, would you name a number, please? Five. Please. Piece of music for you, Mary. That track was The Only Way Is Up. You looked as if you recognised it, Mary. Mm. You were digging around there. Mm. And that song topped the British singles charts in 1988 performed by former model Yasmin Evans. By what name was she better known? Um, Yazoo. It was actually Yaz. Oh, yeah. And, and her band was it. called The Plastic Population. Mm -hmm. Mike, would you name a number, please? 26, please. Number 26. Uh, this is someone you might recognise, Mike. Recognise it? Yes. I believe you're actually a relative of Russ Conway, isn't that right? Uh, yes, relative? I know that, but I don't think he does. Oh, well, how far away is it? Second cousin, something like that. Oh, well, like that's that. not bad. D did you recognise that Kylie yes. Minogue number? Yes, Better the Devil You Know. Now, in 1990, that song became Kylie's tenth top five single. With which British hit-making threesome did she record all her early chart successes? Stock, Aiken and Waterman. Yes, very good. Number 26 is yours. Day A, please. A date line for you, Mike. The 26th of August, 1966, and our computer, with all these wonderful questions relating to every date in the last 50 years, has come up with this for that particular date. Which country's Air Force was reeling after several senior officers in the Federal Ministry of Defence resigned, following disclosures that 60 US-built Starfighter jets had crashed on training missions? America? No, Mike, I thought for one moment you wouldn't remember it all, actually. It was a very long question. It was the West German Air Force. What a shame. You have an open date line you can change. You don't have 30 bonus points. Vic, we come back to you to name another number, please. 53, please. 53 you've picked, Vic. Is there any reason you... The year I uh, started work. Ah, right. Well, let's see if you saw this movie, which was a little bit later than 53. It's quite a maze, isn't it? I should have warned you that those passages were a waste of time. So you found the young lady, hmm? One of you is brighter than I thought. That's me. And in that case, you're entitled to your reward. Did you ever see that? No. City Under the Sea, made in the 60s, Vincent Price there. Now, one of Vincent Price's earlier roles was in a groundbreaking Warner film called House of Wax, perhaps best remembered for its pioneering efforts with which visual experience? No. Oh, it was 3D. Oh. You had to wear those funny glasses, oh, do you remember? Said. Mary, would you like to name a number? I'll stick with five, please. Um, a slightly earlier movie for you, Mary. Okay. Harboring an escaped murder is a very serious offence, Mrs. Hawkins. I should sit down. Of course, if you were intimidated or blackmail when you told us the whole story, well, that would put a different complexion on the matter. You know, without your help, we're going to have to make persistent inquiries. It's often very embarrassing for the people concerned. You get to know all sorts of things. 
Now, Mary, I would doubt if you saw that the first time around, because it was made the year you were born, but have you mm. ever seen it since? No. no. Well, it was Hell is a City, and it was Stanley Baker with which British actress known for her stage and television roles? Uh, Billy Whitelaw. Yes, that is right. Number five. Where's that going? Uh, month uh, B, please. Mary, you have another dateline. This time it's the 15th of May, 1960. England's soccer team was beaten 3-0 in Madrid. Captaining England for the first time was a brilliant Fulham inside forward. Who was he? Um, um, the, um, Dean, um... It was Johnny Haynes. Right. Mike, your turn to name a number. 89, please. Uh, another 60s movie for you, Mike. I've persuaded London Transport lend us this old bus. We fix it up like a mobile hotel. This year we live in it, take it to the south of France. Then next year we'll be ready to take paying passengers. The sky is the limit. Great. Great. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that great? great? Yeah, 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 yeah. One thing. We've got to do the fixing. Well, Mike, I don't think you were even thought of when that was made, two years before you were born, but you may well have seen it since. My daughter's favourite movie. Is it really? Of yes. course, it was summer holiday yes. with Sir Cliff Richard. Now, on their summer holiday, which dancer and actress, also known for playing Aunt Sally and Wurzel Gummidge, do they give a lift to? Una Stubbs. Yes, right. How many times have you seen it? <laughs> About 70, I think. Oh, it's on where, every day. <laughs> where are you going to put your number? Year A, please. And Mike has changed his date line to the 26th of August, 1989. On the 26th of August, 1989, Mike, it was reported that Betts Hanger Pit was closing, the last coal mine in which southern county? There aren't that many southern counties with coal mines. No. Cornwall? No, it wasn't. That's tin mines, Mike. It was, in fact, Kent. Vic, back to you to yeah. name a number, please. 22, please. Vic, which British actor who starred in Quo Vadis and Spartacus said a diplomat these days is nothing but a head waiter who is allowed to sit down occasionally? Leo Gunn? No, Vic. It was Peter Ustinov. Mary, would you name a number, please? Uh, three. Which democratic statesman and 39th American president is reported to have said, I am convinced UFOs exist because I've seen one? Uh, President Carter? Yes, Mary. Jimmy Carter is right. Number three. Month B, please. Still with 60, but another month. The 15th of March, 1960. This is what our computer has come up with, Mary, for that date. The British record transfer fee... Oh, dear, it's another football <laughs> question. <laughs> the British record transfer fee for a soccer player was broken when Manchester City paid £53,000 for which Scottish international? Uh, Dennis Law. Yes, well done, from Huddersfield. <laughs> 30 bonus points, putting you on 140. Dateline A is open to change. Mike, would you name a number, please? 93, please. In a classic comedy sketch, what kind of creature were John Cleese and Graham Chapman arguing over when they said if you hadn't nailed it to the perch, it would be pushing up the daisies? A parrot. A parrot. Wonderful sketch from and now for something completely different. 93 is going where, Mike? Uh, in year A, please. So, you two are changing your date line again, the 26th of August, 1993. A nature report claimed that it would take 50 to 100 years for which atmospheric layer to recover from its destruction by CFCs? The ozone layer. Yes, Mike. 30 bonus points. And that brings us to the end of round two. Let's take a look at the scores. Vic on 30 in third place. Mike, you've now moved into second place on 80. Mary is in the lead on 140 points. <laughs> but we still have round three to play, and things very often change in round three. We're going to take a quick break now, and I'm going to leave you with a question at home. On September the 9th, 1984, in Edinburgh... The chairman of the National Coal Board, Sir Ian McGregor, arrived for strike talks with Arthur Scargill with what on his head? It wasn't a hat. Find out after the break. <laughs> Again, before the break, I asked you what the chairman of the National Coal Board, Sir Ian McGregor, was wearing on his head when he arrived in Edinburgh for strike talks with Arthur Scargill. 
in September 1984. I told you it wasn't a hat. It was, in fact, and I have no idea why, a carrier bag. <laughs> Let's move now into round three and see that Mary is in the lead on 140 points. Now, in this round, you can be a bit more crafty the way you play because you not only get to pick numbers off the board, you're allowed to pinch numbers from the other contestants. So if you play very cleverly, you can actually make it very difficult for them to score. It's another buzz around. Again, you have to buzz in quite quickly to get your answer in first. Here goes. Until his death in 1967, who was the manager of the Beatles? Mike. Brian Epstein. Yes, pick or pinch, Mike. I will pinch Mary seven, please, and put it in my month B. Which family of insects has species called pharaohs, weavers, drivers, and leaf cutters with individuals called soldiers protecting the colonies? Ants. Pick. Ants is right. Pick or pinch. Uh, pinch Mary 60 and put it in year A, please. <laughs> We have a date line, Dick. It's the 16th of November, 1960. Nice short question for you. The actor known as the King of Hollywood died. Who was he? Clark Gable. Yes, the lovely Clark Gable. 30 bonus points. And a frozen date line, Dick, that you can't touch until you've completed another one. In the film Star Wars, which actor played the character of Han Solo? Mike. Harrison Ford. Yes, pick or pinch. I will pinch. Mary's 29, please, and stick it in my day B. Oh, dear Mary, this is not good news for you at the moment. On an ordnance survey map, what is depicted by a pair of cross swords? Mary. A battle site. Yes, pick or pinch. I will pinch 11 from Vic, please, and move it to uh, month A. So, you have another date line, the 9th of November, 1947. You'll be very glad, Mary, to know that this is not a football question. <laughs> what morning ceremony in Whitehall was filmed for the first ever high-definition telerecording and shown again that evening? Uh, state opening of Parliament. Oh, no, Mary, I'm sorry it wasn't. It was a Remembrance Day service at the mm -hmm. Cenotaph. No bonus points. Which mass participation British sporting event was won in 1995 by Dionisio Ferron? Of Mexico. Yes, Mary. Uh, London Marathon. Yes, it was. So, pick or pinch. Uh, I'd like to take eight from Mike to my month A. So you've changed the month and it's now the 9th of August 1947. Which actor, known on radio for his catchphrase, Mind My Bike, was co-starring with Kathleen Harrison in the comedy film Holiday Camp, where they played the Huggets? Um, Kenneth Williams? No, Mary. A bit earlier than that. It was actually Jack Warner. Comedians Gareth and Norman are better known by what names? Mike? Hale and Pace. Yes, pick or pinch, Mike. I will pick. 89, please, to go in my year B. A date line, Mike, the 29th of September, 1989. In which athletics event did Javier Sotomayor of Cuba break the world record at the Caribbean Championships? Long jump. No, Mike, it was the high jump with 2.44 metres, that's 8 feet, for those of us who still can't quite work it out. Which divided capital city is known as Lefkosia by the Greeks and Lefkosia by the Turks? Yes, Vic? Istanbul? No, it's not. Anyone else? Uh, Nicosia? Nicosia is right, yes. What are you going to do, pick or pinch? I'd like to take uh, 66 from the board to my year A, please. <laughs> So, the 9th of August, 1966. On the 9th of August, 1966, who mistakenly attacked a friendly South Vietnamese village 80 miles southwest of Saigon? Um, the US Army? No, no, Mary, I'm afraid it wasn't. It was actually the United States Air Force. I'm sorry, I can't accept that. By what <laughs> Ah, that sound brings us to the end of round three. Let us see who is going to go on to play a date with a decade. Vic. You are on 70 points in third place. Mike, 110 points second place. Mary, you have won on 170 points. <laughs> so, Mary, you go on to play our date with a decade, but Vic and Mike, you were very good contestants. Thank you for playing. And you take away with you our consolation prize, which is very nice. It's an electronic personal organizers. Don't let the batteries go flat. Okay. Thank you for playing. Thank you. Thank you.
Mary, would you join me, please, to play a date with a decade? <laughs> Well done, Mary. Thank you. How are you feeling? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so far, yeah. Which decade are you going to choose? Uh, the 70s. 70s. You were just coming into your teens then, weren't you? Yes. Why have you gone for the 70s rather than later? Um, it's a decade I sort of uh, still feel I'm at home in. It's amazing how many people like the 70s. It's yeah. extraordinary. We don't like to admit it, though. <laughs> I don't mind admitting <laughs> it. Let me tell you how we play date with the decade. You have to match the nine events that I'm going to name to the nine years on the board in 60 seconds. And you must then name the face, which is a face of the 70s, which will be revealed as you answer the questions. But we've scrambled the face up to make it rather more difficult for you. Then at the end, I'm going to give you five seconds to look at the face, and then you must name the face of the 70s. And you have to get that right to win Backdate and our leather-bound chronicle of the 20th century. Are you ready to play? Yes. Start the clock. Conservatives led by Heath win general election. 1974, uh, 1970. Yes. The Queen celebrates Silver Jubilee. Uh, 1977. Yes. Football World Cup held in Germany. Um, 74. Yes. The Watergate break-in. Uh, 72. Yes. Yom Kippur War begins. 73. Yes. Brotherhood of Man win Eurovision Song Contest. 76. Yes. Annie Hall beats Star Wars to win Best Picture Oscar. Uh, 78. Yes. Rolling Stones at number one with album Sticky Fingers. Uh, 71. Yes. Forty Tiles, first seen on television. 75. Yes. <laughs> and that was in a very good time indeed, Mary. I'm now going to give you five seconds to have a look at that face. Do you know who it is? Um, no, I can't. Oh, make a guess. <laughs> Uh, Margaret Hatchin? No. Oh, what a shame, Mary. Let's have yeah. a look and see who it was. Barbara Castle. Castle. Yes. Yeah. What a shame. Oh, yeah. She was, of course, the employment secretary in 1970. Yeah. Oh, and you did so well. You got that in such record time, all those answers. Mm. But you do take away with you a consolation prize, yeah. which is the electronic personal mm. organiser. Okay. You can put in every date there your heart's content. Right. Thank you for being a very good contestant. Right, thank you. And will you all join us again at the same time tomorrow, four o'clock, to play another game of Backdate. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>well keep those brain cells in trim because you'll need them for another number crunching countdown that's on four in a couple of minutes